How far you reach now, guys? And about to finish. Where's the end you finish? Let me see. All right, so I'll give you about five more minutes. All right, guys, who is, who is already finished? Want to start and get through these before the time runs out? All right, um, I saw Mr. Lamar's hand. Anybody else is finished? Okay, Ms. Shamel, you want to do the first one? Yes, sir. All right, so. Walk me through the process. So which side are we starting off with? Remember, you're writing out the formula. The Pythagoras. You know? so the, it's a square plus b square equals c square. Right. So in this case, we, we don't have any a, b, and c in our labels. But we should be able to add mm -hmm. in sides just by looking at them. So which side yes, sir. we're going to start off with? Remember, the formula must start with what? Which side? So the x. The longest, the, the longest side, which is the hypotenuse. And so in yes, this sir. question, which side is the hypotenuse? The 16, sir. Right, so the formula must start off with the 16. So we're gonna have 16 square equal x squared plus 8 squared. What are you so far, Ms. Shamar? Oh, Shamar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. All right. So, but to me, always write the formula starting with the hypotenuse. Whichever side the hypotenuse is, that's the side it's the formula is that clear yes sir and it is if it should by now you should by now be able to identify that because you know it is right across from the 90 degrees angle and it is the longest side so it should be able to Hello? yes are you hearing me yes, sir. All right, so what are we going to do now? Let us do it. Um, you can you can do the re rearrangement so that we keep x by itself, the x square by itself on one side. So in this case, we need to move the a square to the other side. All right. 
You are saying something, Ms. Shamel? No, sir. Okay. So moving the eight square to the left hand side. Remember, it's a positive eight square on the right hand side. So what will happen when you move it to the left hand side? It's going to become negative. All right. So we're going to have 16 square minus eight square. equal to x squared. All right, so now, now that we have the x by itself on one side and the numbers on the other side, we can calculate the numbers on the left-hand side. So that would give you what? Let me square 16, what you get, Mr. Man? Four. No, not square root, you know. Square and mean oh, that the number 256, by sir. Okay, so I should get 256. And then now, when you square it, what you get? 64. 64. All right. Now that would equal to x square. So next, you can simplify the left hand side by doing the subtraction now. So what you get after is subtract. 64 from 256. 192. All right, so you have 192. All right, so 192 equal to x squared. Now, at this point, you can always flip around the equation, put the x on the left side and the 192 on the right side. So the x squared on the left side, you would have x squared equal to. 192. Following, Ms. Jamal? Yes, sir. All right, so what we do next? If um cancel the square, sir. All right, so, so generally we would find square root of both sides and then cancel the square with the square root. Or and then we find the square root for 192, which is 13.86. All right, so you could just you could just imagine that you move this square to the other side and it becomes a square root. So it would be x equal to the square root of 192 and you will get what? 13.86 centimeter. So x is equal to 13.86 x centimeter. Now remember, I, I mentioned that your answer should be rounded off to the same number of places as the values in your question. So your values in the questions are rounded off the whole numbers. So if you round off your answer to a whole number, what would you get? Thirteen. 0.86 round off to what you get 14. Okay, you agree with her, Miss Shamel? Say that again, sir. Miss Brown is saying that when you round off 13.86 to a whole number, you get 14. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. How do, how do we arrive at the answer, Miss Shamel? Sir, because the eight is greater than five, so we had um, one to the three, which makes it four. All right, good. And then now we keep our units that is in the question, so it is in centimeters. So it's 14 centimeters. All right, thanks much, Miss um, Miss Shamel. Anybody else want to do the next one? Who is doing the next question? Ms. Waysom, are you in any position now to do any other question? Oh, Ms. Waysom got kicked off again. Um, who wants to go next? Ms. Brown, you want to do the next question for us? Sure. 
the we are working the ones on the left hand side. I have 10 centimeters squared. All right. So as I said, if you are working the, with the formula, you don't have to put in the units until when you get to the answer. So you have 10 squared. 10 squared is equal to 5 squared plus x squared. I squared plus x squared. Okay. All right, so what we do next? I carried over the five squared. Over the five squared. Which would equal to negative because the five squared is a positive. It's positive. Very, very good. So now we're going to have what? Ten, ten, ten squared minus five squared. And that would equal to x squared. X squared. Very good. All right, next. Ten squared. Oh. 10 squared is 100. So 10 squared gives us 100. 5 squared. Minus 25, because 5 squared is 25. 25 oh. is equal to x squared. All right, so when you do your subtraction, now what you get? And the subtract 25. 75. So you have 75 is equal to x squared. All right, so we can always flip around now, Miss um, Brown. Flip it around, keep the unknown on the left-hand side. We do that because that's how we like to present it. But we could, we could solve it and keep it on the right hand side. It wouldn't, there's nothing illegal in that. All right, so next, what we do now, Miss Brown? Uh, do, um, we find the square root of? Yes, uh, yes, sir, of 75. And then what we get? I got, I got 8.66, and when I round it off, I got 7. So we got 8.66. And when I round this off, I got seven. When you round off, you get, you got? Seven. Oh, you get seven. Just sorry, sir, nine. <laughs> okay. So you get nine. All right. Because you look at the six greater than five, you add one to the eight, you get nine. So that becomes nine centimeters. All right, good. All right, who else want to jump in and do the next one for us? Um, Ms. Shamel or Mr. Yes, Bart, sir. I want to give you another shot at the next one because since the others would have gotten a set to practice before you came, I want to give you a little bit more practice. So can you do the next question for us, Ms. Shamel? Sure. That's the one with the um. We are dealing with this one. Okay, sir. So I, I I found a way that um that's different than yours, and I still get about the same answer. All right, just tell me how you want to work it. It doesn't matter which way you want. Okay, sir. So I write I wrote about the formula, which is a square plus b square equals c square. A square. Okay, so, all right, there's a, there's a little problem I have with the formula, Ms. Chamel. And the problem is the formula will work if A is the hypotenuse, but it's not all the time in a triangle that you're going to find A to be the hypotenuse. So that's why we okay. just focus on which side is that happening because that's the side you really want to start with. So if you really want to write the formula, no problem if, if you are comfortable with, the, with it like that. But just remember that the A has to be the high possible side. All right, okay, so, so in this case, X would be the hypotenuse. Right. Because it is opposite to the right angle. 
Exactly. You would have x square okay. equal to 10 square. What metro now? 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters square plus five centimeters. Make sure you just put the centimeter until you get to the answer you put in the centimeter. All right, Mr. Man. So we can say 10 square plus five square. All right, so what next now, Ms. Shamel? So X square is equal to 100 centimeter. So what am I doing column here, let's say? 100 plus? 25. 25. Okay, so 125. So x squared would be equal to 1. And then now to get x, we simply we have to square it. So not square. Square, square both sides. Not square, no, square root. So the square root for 125 will be 11.18. I don't want you to confuse square with square root. Square root is the opposite of square. All right. So square and root square. of 125 is what? 11.18. All right. So 11.18. So it is 11.18. I heard you guys calling a number after the point all the time, but it's not correct to say 11.18. So please do the, say the correct thing. It is 11.18. All right, Ms. Shamel? Yes, sir. Okay, so that would be the answer. So now what we want to do is to round off based on what the, the values in our questions are. So if our values are round off to whole numbers, we have to round off our answer to whole number. And if they are round off to some number of decimal places, then we round off our answer to that, no, that number of decimal places, right? So when you round okay. off, what you get? 11. Okay, so X is equal to 11. Now you can put back now, your units, which is centimeters. All right. All right, very good, Ms. Shamel. Thanks much. Thank uh, you. Anybody else want to do on um, the next question? Ms. Brown? Or Miss Green, Miss Green, you want to do the next one for us? So I got the same answer. Um, for the next one. Yes, sir. Okay, so it, it would be given the same answer. So it's just the same triangle that was flipped over in a different way. So we can skip this one then because it basically is worked out in the same way as the one before. All right, so who wants to do this question for us? Mr. Lamar, you want to do this one for us? Okay, sir. All right, go ahead. So is the advantage and could can you which triangle? Oh uh, we're working this one here. Okay, sir. All right, so let us begin. Which side we're starting off with? So x squared equal. X squared equal. 7.5 squared. 
7.5 square plus plus 15 squared 15 square all right so we have x squared remaining on the left hand side so what we get on the other side now mr Lamar? 56 56 plus 225 and there's some those that we get 281 281 so then x equals square root of 281 what you get 17 <coughs> so x is equal to 17 what's the unit here 17 centimeters 17 centimeters don't forget the unit guys that is very important without a unit your values don't mean anything at all all right um who would like to do the next one for us Mr. So Bartley, you want to do the next one for us? All right, we'll make Mr. Lamar do it for you, Mr. Bartley, because it seemed like you're off the air. All right, Mr. Lamar, walk us through the next one, please. So your formula would be x squared right, equal so x squared so that would be our hypotenuse yes sir equal to what now seven and a half squared plus seven and a half squared you know it's seven and a half squared plus seven and a half squared because the lines indicate that is it is equal all right all right so let us work with the decimal so 7.5 squared yes sir now, as you are saying this line indicates yes, that this side these two sides with the same line has the same measurement in length. So this would be 7.5 centimeter as well. All right, so um, that's how we, 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 we denote sides that have in the same value. We put um, strokes on those sides with the same value. All right, so we would have plus 7.5 here again. So plus 7.5 square. All right, go ahead now and tell me what your calculations are. X squared equal 56. So you have 56 and of course. Plus 56. It, the next one will be 56 too as well. And you add those what you get. Sir, if you add them to the exact decimal place, you would get 130 after whole numbers. So it yeah, would be. You didn't give me the decimal places. You don't, you only I, so may I rephrase with decimal places because if you use what, because if you use 56 and 56, it, that would be wrong. Right, so 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 you should provide us with the decimals when you're doing your calculation. All right, so fifty six point fifty six point two five plus fifty six point two five. Yes, sir. Yeah, add those now. What you get? Fifty six one two five plus sure. one, two, so you five. get one hundred thirteen. One hundred and thirteen. And so the square root of one hundred and thirteen give you what? Eleven. All right. So x give you x equal to eleven. 
centimeters. Centimeters. All right. All right. So it's good that you you had actually made that point about the decimal places. So let me just give you a rule of thumb when you're working with decimals. Now, if you're calculating with decimals, whatever the calculator gives you as you calculate, you have to use those values and continue to calculate until you get to your answer. So don't round off any values before you get to the answer. So you calculate exactly with what is on the calculator, right through the entire question. And when you get to the answer, that's the time you do your rounding off. Is that clear, guys? So in other words, don't round off any of these values when you are calculating them. So whatever the calculator give you, in this case, if you square this, 7.5, whatever the calculator give you, you write down the exact values and you calculate. Continue with all of those values until you get to the answer. And if you need to round off, you round off the answer, not the values in your calculation. Please guys, don't do that because it will create errors in your answers. All right? All right, so with that said, um, good job, guys. Everybody seemed to get the hang of this. So um, these are the answers to all the questions. And, and so this is what we're supposed to get. Um, all right. The, the, we have isosceles triangles. I wanted to reason why we're going to study the isosceles triangles is because we can form two right angle triangles from an isosceles triangle. Now, we don't really have enough time to, to get into the fullness of isosceles. So I'm just going to introduce it to you in the little five minutes that we have remaining. Um, so what is an isosceles triangle? Can anybody give me um, their definition of what an isosceles triangle is? Can anybody give me a def definition for an isosceles triangle? Sure, can you repeat? I'm asking someone to give me a definition for isosceles. Sir, an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two equal sides and one longer or shorter side. All right, so one unequal side, we'll work with that. So two sides are equal and one not equal to the other two. All right, now the unequal side in general, we would put that to sit down on the, on the ground. So it means that if we're sitting down on the unequal side, so let's say this side is the unequal side, then the side which a triangle is sitting on, we call it the base. So we are making the unequal side the base. Whichever side you put to the ground is known as the base. So if your unequal side of, a, of an isosceles is the base, then the other sides that joined together at the peak, those two sides would be the equal side, right? Now, there are some properties with isosceles triangles. Now, the fact that you have two equal sides, it means that the angles at the base are going to be equal. So you're going to have equal angles down here. So if this angle here is x degree, this one over here is also x degree. So the base angles are equal. So that is a property of isosceles triangle. All right, now the, the peak is called the apex. All right, so the peak is called the apex. And, and so the angle at the peak is referred to as the apex angle. 
So this angle is called apex angle. Now, if you should draw a vertical line from the apex to the base, so that it forms right angle with the base. These two right angles, these two would be two right angles after you cut the, um, if you cut the, the isosceles in two from the apex, but right down to the base, you will get two equal, or should I say similar right angle triangle. And one would be the mirror image of the other. That means if you fold, fold them along that vertical line, the triangle will match on top of each other perfectly. So if you fold the left side onto the right side, you will get a perfect match. And so that is one of the property of an isosceles triangle. So it means then for the two right angle triangle that you form from the isosceles, the apex angle going to cut into two equal angles. Now remember now that for the triangle, all angles must add to give you 180. So if you have the two base angles, which are X, then this angle up here, if you call the apex angle, it's going to be the remainder that you need to make the total triangle into 180 degrees. Now, if this angle at the top, when you split it, it will be split into two equal angles. So we can call this angle on the left, y degrees, and the one on the right would also be y degrees because this apex angle is split equally. Now, so this vertical line that comes down splits the apex angle in two equal parts. And it also splits the base in equal lengths. So it means then, it means then, if you take one side of the right angle triangle, or one side of the isosceles, you have a right angle triangle. So both sides would be right angle. Now, if you, the base is split into two equal parts. So if this length of the base here is B on this side, the length of the base is B for the left right angle triangle, the length of the other one is also B. All right, because the base is split into two equal lengths. All right, and so these are the chief properties of isosceles. And because of that, we can also apply Pythagoras' theorem to an isosceles. All we need to do is cut it down through the middle from the apex angle to the base, and we would have two right angle triangle, and we can just work with one side if we need only to find values for one side. So depending on what we are asked to find, we'll decide which side of the triangle we're going to work with, either one or both. Is that clear, guys? Raise your hand if it is clear, what I've just explained. All right, any question about this? All right, so I'm going to stop our session, uh, our class here now because the Zoom is going to run out soon. So I'm going to stop sharing.